Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Making a House a Home, a uh, Ramadan special with myself, Sana Araji, and our guest, Fahima Muhammad, a qualified life coach and an NLP practitioner. Assalamu alaikum, Fahima. Alaikum salam. Uh, thank you for joining us today. And inshallah, we're going to be um, discussing um, how to take uh, forward the lessons we've uh, to lessons we will learn during Ramadan, and uh, how how to implement those lessons in our lives. Um, Fahima, would you be able to go into depth about this for us? Yes, of course. Because um, many of us are really hyped about Ramadan, and we perform and we do whatever we need to do during that month, mm -hmm. which is great. But we have to remember that when the month's over and um, in order to keep that spirit alive and going, the real test comes afterwards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like when you're driving and you know you have your lessons and you pass your, your driving test, but the real test is when you're on the road for the rest of the time. Yeah. It's exactly the same. And we need to understand that once it's over, you know, you need to sort of, again, after reflection, is to appreciate the fact that you were there to actually experience another month of Ramadan. Sometimes we don't even, you know, reflect upon that. Mm. Every year goes by so quickly and we're growing, we're evolving and we're learning. But with that, we're actually gaining a lot of strength and knowledge. Yeah. We're actually growing as individuals, as humans. And we need to sort of take the lessons from it in a very, very practical way. Not just think that, okay, we go to a lot of the time, it's back to the norm. What is the norm? This should be like part of your new norm. Mm -hmm. You know, when you <coughs> finish Ramadan and you start, you know, the following day after the Eid, you know, you need to sort of think, how am I going to practice this and keep this alive? Because, you know, we feel the spirit and we, we feel that spirituality in that month, which is so blessing and we like everyone's calm and peaceful and kind and nice to one another. Yeah. And it all kind of disappears slowly and disintegrates. So when things are sort of like over and finished, we need to sort of take some practical tips as to how can we, you know, bring Ramadan into our lives on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So it's not even about just reflecting. It's about the lessons. What are the lessons? And if we actually realize that what we were supposed to do <clears throat> and what we did do during the time in the holy month of Ramadan, when we were fasting, when we were tired, and we still manage to do the extra worship yeah. and the extra prayer and to go to the mosque and to pray in the you know during the, the last few days and you know go to the amals and all of these things then actually on a normal day we should actually be thinking that we can do a lot more but yeah. we don't do that we think that you know actually we just go back to you know reality of you know the normal life of just work and home and whatever other entertainment that we might find ourselves doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's really important that not just to, to sort of take those lessons to the next level, but for the next Ramadan. You know, pray that you're there for the next Ramadan and that whole year could be preparation. Yeah. That whole year could be reflection. That whole year could be building a character and the virtues within yourself. Mm. Yeah. And basically, you need to set yourself some realistic goals yeah. and have this as an outcome that you really want to do. Realistic goals, like write down, what is your Ramadan checklist? The Ramadan checklist is, first of all, and first, you know, is the prayer. And we think that we can't do that after Ramadan, but then even fasting. It's recommended even during the normal days after Ramadan that we should be fasting on a Monday and the Thursday, for example. Yeah. Certain times of the month, we have so many occasions during, you know, the year that we can actually use to, as a reminder to bring us back to the mosques and the communities and to actually give as well in charity, to continue with our work that we do during Ramadan time and actually build bigger projects and yeah. make it into action. So those are the things that I think those are the lessons. And when we have self-control and self-restraint, and yes, we, we are aware that in that month we are held back and Allah gives us the you know that blessing in order to you know keep us calm in that way mm -hmm. but because we are able to do it then we should really practice that afterwards yeah definitely every day yeah no definitely and and like you were saying with uh, just <coughs> like fasting on perhaps Mondays or Thursdays that all kind of um, also contributes to preparing yourself yes. for <coughs> Ramadan for the, for the following year so you're kind of used to that 
Um, every, yeah, yeah that, that routine that, you know what, on these days I'll be fasting, whether it's just once a week or once every two weeks, yes. so that when it does come to Ramadan, you're, you know, it's not as difficult or it's not as much of a challenge from you know when 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 you're doing it literally Absolutely. just on on that month of ramadan Absolutely. so it, you know that yeah. that's also a good lesson to kind of you can use that to to move forward so when it does come to ramadan it, it you know it's less Definitely. challenging and there's health benefits to it anyways and we just don't even yeah do it. exactly so yeah. the health benefits of continuation you know can you, continuing in the sort of like you know fasting and um, and giving in charity should be regular. It brings about so much blessings even after. Mm. When you the more you give, you know the more you receive. Yeah. And the more the more you do that, the more you can reflect as to how much you have and have blessings and gratefulness. And you know, like with the, the sadaqah, the charity that you were saying, I, I I know of people who what they do, they'll they'll perhaps have say I don't know 50 20 peas, and every day it will become a routine. So when they leave mm. their house, they'll put sadaqah. They'll when when they come back they'll put sadaqa and so what it becomes a lifestyle so that you you don't kind of do it just for an occasion you do it as part of your everyday life and so routine good. i mean that is actually re a really good way of setting yourself into a habit of giving charity because that every day you know few pence that you put away and at the end you collect it yeah it really amounts to so much more and people don't realize that mm. and again it comes back to creating new habits mm. and it takes you know, statistically around 90 days, <laughs> in fact, it, that we say as coaches in order to create a new habit, once you're conscious of it, and then you keep, you know, um, basically replaying that habit in your mind, in your body, in your, and then also with the actions. But at the same time, when you really want something and you want something really bad, it can be instant. Okay. Mm. So just like with the charity, if you make up your mind that every day I'm gonna take out a few pence and put it to one side, that is an instant habit. You just need a reminder and there's a trigger that we have within us in order to remind ourselves whether it's a time that we look at or you know uh, something that we do in the morning or in the evening that will you know remind us we're putting taking our wallets out from our pocket or something mm. we have to make sure we take out a few pence from there yeah or we'll make something. it fun for the children to for them to get involved because yes. you know children they love reminder. doing that little, you know the, the yeah. pocket money or the little money boxes you can make that a routine for the children definitely, definitely. and you know they can become familiar with charity from a young age and, and it'll become fun and they'll be asking you, won't they? Mama, can we put sadaqa? Or mum, dad, can we put charity? And, and it will become part of their lifestyle as well. So it will benefit the whole, the whole household really, wouldn't it? And you know, we always feel that, you know, we have to be in a certain particular environment in order to have the spirituality. Mm. And we need to get that out of our heads. Yeah. We need to be in those zones whenever we need to be in those zones. And um, you know, by us always um, knowing that we have that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have that love for him yeah. and the Ahlul Bayt, then that becomes something that we can switch on at any time. So don't use the excuse that Ramadan is gone, the spirituality is gone, that time is gone, just like when people go for ziyara or for hajj or anything like that, or oh, we can't feel that spirit again. No, of course it's not the same. No one's saying it's gonna be the same. Yeah. But you can bring it alive when you need to bring it alive. Sometimes, you know, drinking a water from there or, you know, or having a memory or a thought and you know or you know remembering that maybe you were in a certain person's house or being part of a community or a project yeah continue with that project make mm. it bigger be something make it b something positive something that could come to light and to life mm. you know in the long term especially when you're talking about communities and structure um i feel that um it shouldn't stop just ramadan ramadan is a kickstart yeah and it should really jump start you for the rest of the year Definitely. and for you to continue with these projects and to make it even bigger and to open it up so that each Ramadan is becoming a lot more easier and these issues are going to be less and less because they're be actually being dealt with. Yeah. And that's where the real learning and lessons come into play. Yeah. So, you know, the practice of it has to be solid. But you can't do that unless you have the intention and the right amount of knowledge and understanding about it. Mm. People just come and go in and out of life, you know, like birds. They fly into their nest and do and, you know, feed their children and leave and then you know, go back to work again. No, th it needs to be consistent, it needs yeah. to be continuous. And that's when that aliveness of that feeling and that, that whole idea of you know, feeling blessed and you know, feeling that, you know, that sort of like um, benefit of those holy months can come into your household every day. And you know the barakah and blessing it brings into your household when you try to bring this back, yeah, even when it's gone. You know, the relationships around you, that will improve. 
you know, your sustenance, you know, all of your um, desires, mm -hmm. all of your fulfillment and happiness. People are like, I don't know, I can never be happy. I even have money. I have the career. I have the professional car, whatever it may be. We're not happy. Why? Yeah. Why is that? Because we don't understand what brings happiness. And that is you getting closer to your creator. And that's actually you improving yourself. Mm. And Ramadan, again, is just a start of what we need to become. You know, yeah. being Muslim is becoming more, not just being somebody, yeah. becoming more. So constantly strive towards it. Yeah. I mean, would, would you say that maybe going to regular <coughs> majalis yeah. um, will kind of ignite that spiritual um, connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and so that you're constantly on that path of, of, of being spiritual? connected and reminded of, yeah and, and yeah. reminded because for myself personally I feel when I go to gatherings of majalis whether it's for a, a maulud or if it's for a, a wafat or you know whatever it's for I feel that just that community that gathering that dua that brings, that it, back, brings yeah. it together that everyone is there for the same purpose and we're all and we're constantly being reminded just by going to a majlis you're being reminded whereas maybe if you detach yourself from going all year round and you just go during Ramadan you've you've disconnected yourself slightly um and you don't have that spirituality as much as perhaps maybe going regularly w would you say that would be something well, you good know to what do? you've said actually made me think about something else which is even more important is because sometimes the groups and the friends that we attach ourselves around mm. you know drives us towards or away yeah. from where we need to be so that needs to be taken to, into consideration. Okay. So there's always speeches, there's always lectures, there's always something happening. And we're lucky in our religion and the sect that we believe in, there's always something happening. Mm -hmm. It's that we don't know about it because we don't get ourselves in that way of thinking, the knowledge. We don't attend the maj majlis, and the, I mean the mosques enough to even know or even have a calendar that yeah. tells us, you know, on this month or this day, because there's always something. Even every day of the week, there's a dua. Every Thursday, there's dua kumail at the mosque even, and that brings about community. Yeah. On Friday mornings, you do dua nudba, whatever yeah. it may be. You know, on a weekly basis, you're telling me that you can't find spirituality and to continue. So that's what I'm trying to say. When you want and you seek, that automatically, that knowledge comes, you know, to you. That awareness is brought to you. Yeah. And then that practice can be taken forward. Mm. Only if you have the intention of wanting it. So want it, need it, feel for it. You know, like want it like air, yeah. because it's really vital for us, and it's good for our health. Yeah, in every es and you know essence, it's really really helpful for us. Yeah. We want to be successful. We want to be happy. We want to be fulfilled. We want to be you know creating and building. Where does that all come from? It comes from those sort of aspects in life mm. that we include in our daily routine. Yeah, and people don't see it and they don't do it. And they think that, okay, reading five times Salah, it's not just that. It's what you do in between. Yeah. So bring that to your homes. Definitely, yeah. Treat your family well. Be good to yourself. Even people say, we don't love ourselves. We don't have the confidence. Why not? Allah created you. Love that Allah created you as you. Of course, It's yeah. not about being, you know, uh, arrogant. That's about appreciating mm. the gift that you are given, this life that we have. Yeah. You know, so that way of thinking and that thought creates a different human being and it mm. creates a different way of living. Mm. And when you have that thought because you have the awareness, then that alone, you know, brings about a different set of values that you have for yourself. Mm. And we need to create these values that are strong so that we can be individuals in this world yeah. to influence and be leaders yeah. and be masters in our field, yeah. in our religion, and be taking it forward to the rest of society and communities. Yes, definitely. And I think it's very important for us women to to make sure that we, we do become leaders because oh. we are the ones that are bringing up the next generation yes, definitely. and so it's so important for us women to empower ourselves to be motivated to set good examples for our children and and perhaps even an, an, another way would you say to maybe maintain it throughout the years if you have a few hours to go and do some voluntary work yeah. in the local hospital that is so and and and, and help out I mean um, God bless my mother she she's an example who I've learned from and she's 
she's uh, volunteering at, at a local hospital and she finds that empowering and, and, and that gives her closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it's another way of serving her Lord. Of course. And you're doing it because your niyyah is for the purpose of Allah, not for the purpose of uh, being popular or saying, you know what, I'm doing this, everybody look. Yes. So that could be perhaps another way that we, you know, we could try to maintain it throughout the whole year so that we have that closeness constantly driving towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worshipping Allah and doing it in different ways. It doesn't have to perhaps be sitting down always reading the Quran yes. or reading dua. We can do it perhaps through actions, of would course. you suggest? That's what's needed yeah. is to bring yourselves out into the society. And when you're helping others in that way and being seen as we are, as we represent what yeah. we believe in, and mm. being open in that way and practically putting ourselves out there, literally putting ourselves out there, we yeah. are representing. Exactly. And we're yeah. representing in a good way. And also another thing I want to discuss is that we always think and believe that we have to have Ramadan in order for us to uh, feel spiritual. We have to have perfect situations, perfect scenarios, perfect environment, perfect relationships in order for us to behave and act in a certain way. We need to build ourselves as individuals that mm. regardless of what's around us, okay. we need to be strong and we need to always be good and we need to always create uh, a sense of being where we will represent our values and beliefs regardless of what is against us or oppressing us or what is like, you know, uh, trying to stop us or hold us back. We need to build those sort of characters within ourselves yeah. and teach that to our children as well. Yeah, definitely. You know, things are not going to be perfect. Things are going to be testing and it's going to be challenging and it's going to be difficult. But that's when you shine and rise and, you know, jump over those barriers a lot more. Um, so the strength we need to build with ourselves as, as individuals mm. is vital. Yeah. You know, these lessons that we take is not just in a practical form of just, you know, practicing the obligatory we need to build strong, you know, um, sort of like personalities within ourselves. Mm. When we have those personalities and the strength within ourselves, the power that it brings and prayer is our protection and our power. Yeah. Nothing and no one will stop you. Yes. And you become fearless and your, you know, your life is limitless mm. because of that belief. Definitely. Yeah. And you don't need anyone or anything when you have that mindset. Psychology mm -hmm. is so important to build you. It can break you or build you. And it's yeah. not just about having skill. It's the psychology. Yeah. And people don't realize that. So I work with people closely to build their psychology, to get it to a level where they need to be, yeah. regardless of the situation. But people yeah. always react and conform according to their surroundings and their environment. And yes, we can fall into that trap, but we need to overcome that now. Yeah, that definitely. I think, like you said, we, we really do forget about, uh, you know, the psychology behind everything. Yeah. I think we neglect our minds. Definitely. We don't, uh, you know, we don't put as much uh, attention to, to detail perhaps on, on, our, on how we could improve our mindsets sometimes. And so that, that can, you know, affect our life because we're not, we're not uh, training our mind. We might be going to the gym or, you know, eating healthy and, you know, doing it's all still these not things, working. <laughs> but it's not working. We might have lost weight. We might look better, feel better well, we physically, but yeah. we're still thinking, well, hang on. We're lost. I'm still lost. What's yeah. going on? So, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Um, one quick tip of, you know, of understanding the way in which we think is that we do have stories in our heads constantly mm. and we need to come out of those stories. And those stories are not necessarily true. Yeah. We need to question it. And that's a very powerful way of you taking control. And the other thing is that we give whatever meaning we want to. Yeah. So, you know, whatever scenario that happens in our lives, um, we can make it mean one thing or another. And if we are strong intellectuals with, in, you know, immense knowledge with wisdom, because a lot of us have knowledge. We can Google every kind of knowledge we need yeah. nowadays. You know, we don't even need to have a degree and a master's as much because we can, you know, pick up stuff so easily and so quickly. Definitely. But having to be smart about the knowledge that you have and how to use that knowledge, that's the difference. Yeah. There are people out there that are scholars. They're great speakers. They don't have the platform because they don't have the ways in which to move forward using what they have. So you need to be smart about how you want to maneuver and have a plan, an action plan as to what is it that you want to leave behind you. We're all going to go. We know that, you know, at the end of the day, 
this is a given in life and there's yeah. death. So what does that mean for you? And we've got to remember this all the time. How many of us, even the youth or even adults, go and visit the graveyards? Mm. You know, these things are so vital and important to bring us back to reality. It's not about being, you know, oh, um, being sad and trying to bring, oh, you know, people say, oh, you know, it's just so depressing. No, it's not. It should actually uplift you to yeah. make you realize that what you are given right now and you're breathing right now. And straight away, even the next second, it could be taken away. Mm. So make sure you make those moments that you have really, really vital. Definitely. Make yeah. it important, mm. you know, for yourself and for your family. Don't be following, you know, the rest of society and say, oh, I'm, in, I'm having a midlife crisis. I need to, like, you know, have a list of these things. I need to take off my bucket list and go to Vegas or wherever it may mm. be. No, don't be selfish like that. Be at home with your family. Yeah. Take responsibility. Be committed. Be part of what you stand for, not just, you know, vocally, but through action. People mm. talk a lot and they're like, we have the right intention. If you have the right intention, you will perform. So perform. We need to perform. Inshallah. And, and that, that's like a fantastic way to, to, to look at it. I mean, we should utilize our time yeah. in the right way. Um, but uh, we're going to have to go for a break now. Um, and inshallah, we will come back and answer some questions. So thank you very much, Fahima. You've yeah. highlighted some great points. And I've, again, learned a lot. And I'm sure our dear viewers have learned a lot. So inshallah, um, we'll see you soon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> and welcome back to the second part of make making a house a home uh, where we've been discussing uh, how we can move forward and uh, from the lessons that we learned during Ramadan how we can move forward with those too um, now I do have a few questions from the viewers um, mm -hmm. that they would like you to answer please and now the first question is um, from sister Sumeya and she says how can we maintain spirituality after Ramadan Again, it's all in the psychology of what you, you know, what exactly did you learn? What exactly did you want to learn? And what exactly do you want to, you know, set your goals as? Mm -hmm. So you need to question yourself constantly. You need to seek even more knowledge on a daily basis. I mean, Islam is all about seeking knowledge. And we say, we say that very lightly and loosely, but actually we're not actually seeking the knowledge because that's why we're constantly, you know, confused and we're constantly, you know, at a standstill when yeah. things like this end. Which, which shouldn't be because we should be on a constant continuous like you know conveyor belt of mm. learning it's continuous learning life is continuous learning and when you're openly you know uh, learning and reading about things even outside the idea of Ramadan but you know something that could help enhance what you need to do for example you learnt about you know um, I don't know a, a project that needs doing and you learned that because of some information because you were out there in the community and that could be part of charity and that's part of learning and that's part of Ramadan and that's part of the spirituality mm. things can be connected yeah so people always look black and white when actually in life you know uh, the learning should be broad and it should be wider mm. and then we can bring it back to you know what exactly it still entails you know with regards to our own ba values and beliefs mm. and that's when you become smart and wise yeah and you can actually you know work around society and living and integrating as people want us Muslims to integrate this is how we can integrate educate ourselves widely and bring it back home mm. and um, and you know to bring spirituality I mean what does that mean to you you got a question what is spirituality we say these words and each one it means something different so question yourself what yep. does it mean to you? Does it mean that you want to have an environment about it? Create your home like that then. Yeah. Do, do, do a command in your house. You know, invite a few friends around or family or just even between your own husband and wife and children and create that sense of being. And okay. I tell you that it's so important to have that in your own home. It's so much blessing and people don't even take the opportunity of doing that. Just shut down the TV for half an hour and before having dinner or after having dinner. Have that time in your home and this mm. is real practice. Yeah. 
And these are things that we can do on a weekly, on a daily basis. There's so many du'as that we can have, even if it's five minutes, just to sit when, the, when your husband comes home, you know, when you come home and you finish with the children just ten minutes before bed, just do a du'a together on a daily basis. Do you know how much barakat that is? Yeah. Do you know how much reminder that is? It's not just when you have time by yourself. It's not just when you feel that it has to be a particular occasion. Make it a daily routine. Mm. Learning is routine, yeah. not just an exam period. Even when I try and coach parents and students with regards to study, it's having a mindset of always studying and always learning and always you know, seeking so that when it comes to exam time, you're going to just be more organized, but the learning and the information is already there. Mm. You're just going to put it all together then yeah. you know, and enhance it. Yeah. So it's just the same with spirituality. What does it mean to you? And make it something a lot more. And again, you know, in this life, we need to understand, um, you know, what value we give to ourselves. You know, how do we really want to improve? Mm. And look at ourselves. Really, really look at ourselves. Reflection is so important. Yeah. And that, uh, you know, again, you know, and don't just, we always do things because we feel it's, it's something we have to do. But do it with love. When you do it with love, it's a different meaning altogether. It's a different feeling altogether. And there you go, there's spirituality in itself. Yeah. When you're doing it with love. And you're more motivated. Of course you are. Whatever, you, if you love anything, you're more motivated yeah. to do something because you love, the, the, you know, whether it's a person or whether yeah. it's the job, whatever it is. I think you're right. When it comes to love, we will get motivated. We will do anything to make sure that we will do it and get the job done. And that's why when you say that, you know, yes, people have the human tenderness of being de depressed and lonely and whatever it is. Yeah. But when you, from a young age or even for whatever age, you start creating a habit of having that connection and the love for Allah, the love for the Ahlul Bayt, that alone will never leave you alone. And you will never feel alone. Yeah. And you'll never be alone. And you will always have something within you that is strength and power. And that's what brings spirituality. And that's my meaning. But you know, we each have our own. Yeah. So you need to figure that out for yourself and create it and build it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, would you say sp spirituality could be like, uh, you know, when you go to university and you're constantly studying yeah. and then the end result, the day of judgment, which will be your test. So we could perhaps look at it in that way, think, you know what? Every single day is part of our learning Definitely. We're learning every single day, so let, let's think of it as that concept. And the end result, which will be the, the, the day of judgment, yes. is when we will know whether we have passed, passed or not. Or not. Yeah. So perhaps if we try and look at it in that way, yeah, that, 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 that could yeah. perhaps motivate us as well. And, and as you were saying, with the, um, like the, the repeating the routine yeah. and the spiritual, how to get the spirituality there, perhaps like reading every single day with your child before bedtime yes. you know when you have a story yes part of their after their story would be read a surah of the quran of course. and make that every single day i know people who do that and their children ask them where is the quran we yes. need to we exactly. need to read it exactly and so like you're saying it's that it's just a routine. repetition and routine yeah and it's simple steps like that will get you where you need to get to mm. without you realizing and we say we don't have time, but slowly when we open the doors as with, with wanting goodness, mm. then the time opens up for us. Yeah. So everything is possible. Yeah, subhanAllah. So um, that, that's amazing, really. I've learned a lot from that too. Um, so our next viewer is uh, Ibrahim, and his question is, what practical tips um, can you actually give us that I can use after Ramadan? Well, you know, reading Quran, a lot of the time we neglect a lot. So we feel that um, there's only particular times we can do it, but as we mentioned before, you know, to listen to it audio, you know, in audio, or even carrying a small Quran with you and actually, you know, practicing to even read a page a day. Mm. Just a page a day yeah. is so important. You know, when you do Salah, it's so important. And that added along with that, it brings a different human being to you. And we have to understand we are being protected by those words. Mm. Whatever we are reading, whatever we are believing, it's a protection. We can be careful, but we don't know what's going to come to us. Yeah. So we need to be aware of this. This world can be, you know, so, I don't know, you know, for example, anything can happen. Accidents or, you know, crossing the road or being in a car and not even being able to see something. But that will be your extra sense and your extra eyes and your extra sort of reaction that yeah. you need. 
because you actually took the time to read a few lines before you left the house. Yeah, definitely. Or when you open that door, you know, to actually, you know, uh, or close that door from the house and open your car door and sit inside before, you know, turning anything else on the radio, whatever it may be, listening to LBC. You know, listen and to the Aitho Kursi or say it out loud to yourself or when you're walking on the street. All of these things is practice. All of these things are tips, you know, which is so simple. It doesn't take effort. It doesn't even take time. It's just a memory mm. that you have to just say it. Yeah, I know. I, mean, I think some with people every step. Some people struggle with having to have that routine, and I think some people struggle with change when they have a structured life and they go to, you know, they wake up, get the kids ready, yeah. or go to work, come back, dinner, go to bed, and so that it's that that yeah. routine becomes not addictive how should I say it becomes repetitive yes so they constantly do the same thing and it, and it can be difficult perhaps for some to you know implement even if it's just a small thing like reading one page of a sort yes. so I think maybe change is quite difficult change for some people to adopt something that people need to embrace I love change you need to want change mm. you need to want to come out of your comfort zone because that's when you evolve and grow yeah. that's when you become you know powerful and that's where you build strength you know, even through challenge and trials and tests, people just don't see it like that. Mm. They want everything smooth, they want everything, you know, flowing, but that's when, you know, you become depressed and sad and obviously bored. Yeah. You know, it's a bit of excitement. It's how you look at it. Yeah. So, you know, I want to be challenged in life because I know that's going to give me a learning. I want to be tested because yeah. that's going to give me a new insight. Yeah. So you need to think like that. Yeah. And when you have those thoughts and you have that awareness, then, um, your routine will not ever be the same again. Mm. Even if it's the same, but with that Quran, with that surah, with that recitation that is so powerful, you know, even without you making the change, the change will come to you. Yeah. You don't need to look for doors, the doors will be right in front of you and there'll be plenty for you to walk into. Inshallah, yeah, that, that's, that's fantastic advice. Um, our next um, viewer is uh, Zainab and her question is, uh, how can we make Ramadan more appealing for the youth? Well, first of all, you need to understand why is it appealing for you mm. and reflect that. And you need to have the knowledge about it as well. Know that why is this a holy month? Why is it blessed? And what are the blessings? And use your own experience because we all have a journey and we don't start off all great. We've all come from a certain level and we've hopefully you know, improved and increased. Mm. So speak about that. Okay. And yeah. what was that experience about? And talk to the youth. The, time, the things that we don't you know, talk to our youth about and our own children and you know, cousins and family members that are younger than us is that we don't become vulnerable. When we are vulnerable to our children to a certain extent, then it becomes a connection that they want to relate to and listen to. When you build a connection with somebody, they want to see you being vulnerable at times to say that, yeah, it was tough for me even at your age, but this is what I did and this is what my parents did, this is what my grandparents did, this is what the, you know, I was advised, this is the lectures I listened to and this is what brought me to where I am mm. and this is how I improved. Even with all the studies and with all the education and the best schools that you go to, you can have all of that, but without your religion, without your spirituality, without the right mindset, you're not going to go anywhere that far. Yeah. You're only going to reach a certain level, but to reach the heights that you need to be, this is what Islam brings. Mm. And when you talk to your children in that way, you need to become a motivator. You need to become a coach. You need to become someone who, you know, who is empowering. Yeah. So you've got to be empowered yourself first. Mm. Yeah. You, know, you can't teach people and tell people and advise people because they can feel it if it's true, true genuine. You've got to be passionate first. Yeah. And people listen to you. They will be engaged with what you're saying because when you want to teach, be someone first. Then you can teach and that can be transferred. So you need to transform yourself constantly. Mm. We have to transform ourselves. We need to always build ourselves and slowly whatever we're doing, transfer that and you know, take that advice and give that alongside your transformation. You can actually help the transformation for young people. Yeah, no, definitely. And, uh, and also, uh, what about perhaps getting your child uh, into the centers programs they have a lot they have a lot of, of amazing like programs for the youth in Even different if it's centers it's a football game but just yeah. to mix with the same sort of people who are experiencing exactly. the same thing i mean that's not a bad thing i don't mean when when i say to go out into communities and integrate that we shouldn't be still you know embracing who and what we are in our own cultures of course mm. that's healthy as well 
Yeah. And that's when, you know, especially for children, they want to feel like as if what they're doing, they're part of a community. Exactly, yeah. You know, and that is really healthy for them. Gives them security, it doesn't it? It gives them security. It gives them a sense of belonging. We mm. do need to feel a sense of belonging. Yeah. And that connection that people are similar to us doing the same things, even in an environment where we might be the mono minority. But it's fine because we have a group of people that are like us, that speak the same language, eat the same food, you know, have the same rituals in whichever sense. That's yeah. not a bad thing, too. But don't just, you know, stick to that particular way only. Yeah. That's what I was trying to say. You can get say. the best of both worlds. You can have the best of both and teach them. Yeah. Because in life, we're going to to have to go out there in the real world at some point anyway, in school, university and work. Yeah. And we need to be confident in ourselves that we're going to still carry our values and beliefs and not be influenced and be the one influencing, yeah. not be the ones that are going to be following, but the leaders ourselves. Yeah. So we kind of set our children up for with those skills for their life. Age. So yes. that when they do go to university and, and, and they maybe traveled across the world, they're, they're used to differences. Yes. They're used Diversity. to toler tolerating yeah. others. Di but at the same time, they, they hold their beliefs strong exactly. and within themselves. And they won't conform to somebody else's ideas. And if they ever do, they know it's wrong. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. That, that, that's <laughs> very true, yeah. Um, now, our last um, viewer is uh, anonymous. And uh, the question they've asked is, during Ramadan, there is more of a sense of, of community. Uh, how can we maintain that throughout the year? Yeah, I mean, um, Ramadan brings families together, brings communities together. And obviously, there are occasions, you know, most nights, and especially towards the end, that you will find that people gather together. Mm -hmm. So when you want to actually um, bring about a sense of community, you don't need to always go outside the house. You can actually bring it to your own home mm. and you can actually set something up for your own family or you know a small gathering with friends that you have or whatever it may be. Mm. And that sense of community can still be alive. And yes, yeah. it can be you know um, really exciting during Ramadan because you get to meet people at occasions that you're going through. But with us, we have so many of that, really. Yeah. It's just that we just don't, you know, make ourselves aware of it. And we forget the, you know, we say the little things and we worry about the big things. Yeah. But um, all of it is important and all of it can bring a sense of community. And if it's not there, you can set it up. Yeah. And you start a group. Yeah. And would, would you say it's a good idea to get, you know, the calendar for the whole year so you know yeah. what's, you know, whether Absolutely. it's a Mawlood, whether, you know, what, what, what's happening in your local centre, ask them for their, for their calendar, for their timetable. Definitely. So you can they be part, that part of it. Yeah. Yeah, most centres do. And also, it doesn't even have to be religious as well. You know, if you're meeting with friends and family and you want to even have a book club. Yeah. I think it's a really good way of sharing ideas. It gets you motivated to actually read because you know you're going to be talking about it. It gets you to get into a community sense. It gets you to talk about something. And sometimes you don't want to be so, you know, into uh, something so intense like religion, for example. So you have a book which might remind you of certain things like mm. about life, about development, just generally, which will improve your lifestyle. And it's part of religion anyway, but not in a sense where you're labeling it that. Yeah. So, you know, that is a sense of community. You know, bringing people together. You do that once a week, once every two weeks, once a month, whatever your availability may be. Yeah. A lot of people do that. I know that. You know, there's all these like um, these meetup groups and you can set one up yourself and do it in that way or just amongst your own community that you feel or your, you know, your neighbors or someone close to you. Mm -hmm. So um, there's many ways of, you know, bringing Ramadan alive. There's many ways of always bringing the lessons of Ramadan and taking it forward to the rest of the year. We just have to be creative. We just have to have that need. We need to have that want and we need to have it, you know, with love. Yeah. And when we have it with love and we have a connection, it can definitely be alive most of the year, not just in Ramadan. Yeah. And we can benefit throughout the year and we can take the lessons and let Ramadan be, like I said again, a kickstart, a jump start for us to continue for the rest of the months. Inshallah, definitely. And, and on the topic of perhaps someone who's converting to Islam or uh, is looking into Islam, obviously Ramadan is a time where we, we tend to all gather up in, in the majlis or the, in, in your local center. Mm -hmm. Um, like for, for them, what advice would you give them to kind of uh, maintain the spirituality because their connection isn't all, you know, completely there yet, they're just building the steps to get there. So what advice would you give to someone? Well, that I know is, a is lot of mosques, they still continue with those sort of programs okay. because there's lessons for reverts. Mm. And so they need to have, you know, uh, where we were brought up from a young age, learning how to pray, salah, all of these things, you mm. know, there's still lessons and they're still meeting groups. So even if it's nothing to do with religion, they are meeting groups. And like I said, if it's not there, you can ask the mosque, can we set something up and use your space? Yeah. You know, which is available. Not everyone has the home and the space or the time to do that. So you create it for yourself. And that 
sense of community can still be there and you can have that something set up so when the time of Ramadan comes there is no loneliness the community is there it's set up from before it will continue and it will only grow yeah. and in most cases it only does grow and all you're looking for is a bit bigger space and that's your only issue which is actually a good thing yeah definitely so um, there's always a way there's always possibilities um, always keep striving and I think that Ramadan is a blessed and holy month for so many reasons and I hope we've highlighted that it's so much more than just you know abstaining from food and drink yeah. and just the, the usual worship which is vital but um, we can gain so much more from it and inshallah this, this series is, is mainly there for people to sort of open up their eyes to change mm. and embrace the change yeah. in order to improve don't look at change as a bad thing look at it to improve and to grow. Yeah, and go out of your comfort zones. Go out of your comfort Don't be scared zone. to, to go scared. out of, of your comfort zone. Yeah. You're only going to learn to evolve from it. Yeah. And, you know, um, there's so much that we have that we don't see. There's blind spots that we have in our lives all the time. Yeah. And the only way we can be open up to it is when we put ourselves in situations that we wouldn't normally do. So um, I think we need to really just, you know, love ourselves enough to give ourselves the opportunity to grow in whichever form that that needs to be. Okay, that's great. That was beautifully said and, uh, and, and perfect for, for a great <laughs> ending. So um, we've reached the end of the show now and um, thank you so much, Fahima. You're welcome. Again, I've learned a lot and I'm, I hope that you've learned um, a, a lot of uh, information from this topic. Um, inshallah, you'll see us again on another episode of Making a House a Home um, and have a blessed Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mm -hmm.